a show all about getting kids interested in gardening, coming up next. I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to the show. Hey, this show's all about one of my favorite topics, and that's getting kids interested in gardening. You know, I think it's so good for kids. Anything that you can do to inspire them and get their enthusiasm and interest up and directed the right way about nature is a good thing. Gardening's a great way to teach them important life skills. In today's show, we're going to visit the Camden Daffodil Festival, where there's so many fun things for children to see and learn. I'll also show you a way to get kids' hands in the soil by planting an herb garden and starting seedlings indoors. Plus, we'll have a few special guests out at the farm for lunch, answer a viewer question, and make this delicious recipe. So as you can see, we've got a lot in store in today's show, including me getting my sweet peas planted to get a jump on spring. When we return, we're gonna to head to South Arkansas to the Daffodil Festival, so don't go away. Now, if you know me, you know I'm crazy about daffodils. I've planted hundreds of thousands of them. Well, a small town in South Arkansas has as well. Clara Freeland tells us all about the Camden Daffodil Festival. The Camden Daffodil Festival was formed in 1993 as, as a fundraiser for the Mopac Depot, which was about to be destroyed. A couple of women got together and trying to figure out what they could do to raise money and the Daniels had this beautiful daffodil garden. She said, well, why don't I just open up my garden and charge people to go through there? She said, I imagine we could make $1,200 or so on it. And so that's what they did. And um, it started from there, and it was so successful that the next year we actually formed a daffodil festival, and it's been going on since that time. We have uh, two magnificent gardens, in the Daniels Estate Gardens and the Grace Hill Estate Gardens. The Daniels Garden is magnificent. Uh, it has millions of daffodil blooms blooming in there. It was started by her probably 20, 25 years ago. She has her Japanese gardens and all the beautiful things in there and uh, all the beautiful little hidden areas and rooms that you would see in a garden. You have to really experience the garden to appreciate it. Then we have the Grace Hill Estates. It's magnificent, it has daffodils everywhere. Uh, antiques in the yard, uh, fountains, and in his backyard he has beautiful pools with koi, and uh, he hosts uh, a luncheon out there every year uh, on Friday and Saturday, so you can come out and uh, eat in the daffodils and enjoy your lunch and uh, pick daffodils while you're there. It's a beautiful place. Um, everyone needs to see that. We have uh, about 120 vendors in here uh, this year. They cover all kinds of crafts. We have the most beautiful uh, quilt show and art show and sale. And we have those on display in a separate area uh, across the street over there. They're strictly daffodil paintings and they are very beautiful. We have some wonderful local artists. We want them to remember Camden is a beautiful city, a beautiful city of flowers and a lot of good Southern hospitality. After the break, I'll show you this fun herb project for kids, so stay tuned. When it comes to plants, I have to say herbs are always a good choice for the young gardener. You see, they're easy to care for, and herbs will introduce children to fragrance, flavor, and texture. Here's a project that will get your kids off to a good start in the garden with herbs planted in brightly colored pails. Using a hammer and a nail, an adult should punch drainage holes into the bottom of the pails. Then let your child fill the pails about two-thirds full with soil. Then help them plant a single herb in each pail and fill in with soil. Be sure to water the plants well and add more soil as needed. Then place the pails in a location that will receive six to eight hours of sunlight. Now here's an herb you might want to think about. I love this one. It's called Spicy Glow Basil and it has tiny kid-sized leaves and it makes a very tasty pesto. And then of course there's curly parsley. I love its texture. It's pretty enough to use in a vase all alone or with flowers. 
can be used to garnish or flavor food, and it can even freshen your breath. And then there's oregano. It's an essential herb for pizza. And what kid doesn't love pizza? And take a look at these onion chives. Not only are they delicious in a variety of recipes, but kids will also enjoy giving them a haircut from time to time. As you can see, you can have a lot of fun with herbs, and I encourage you to give this little project a try with your children. You'll be glad you did. You know, kids love to get their hands in the soil and participate in any activity that adults are involved in. And I think getting them involved in gardening as early as you possibly can is a great thing. It just helps them connect to nature. Over the years, I've learned a few things about what's easy for kids when it comes to growing something. I just want to share those tips with you. One of the things that I find is that if the seed are large that you're planting, like the sweet pea seed, or even English pea seed, or sunflower seed, they're easy for the kids to handle and easy for them to plant. So think about that. The other thing is you want things that are big and showy. That's why sunflowers are so great. And you also want things that are easy to grow. Radishes are a natural. You can start them indoors when temperatures outside are a little too cool and they germinate very quickly. In fact, they'll germinate within four to six days, so you get instant gratification by planting them. The other thing is that the seed is very affordable. A packet of radish seed can go a long way in entertaining a kid on a winter day. What I like to do is just start with a basic terracotta pot. It doesn't even have to be this large. I fill it with just a good potting soil and then make sure it's all smooth and even, and I break up any clods that might be in there. You want all the soil particles to be consistent in terms of their size. And I also moisten the soil just a little bit. Sometimes the potting soils can be really dry and they need to be moistened first. And then I just take some seed, like this. It only takes a few out of a packet. And I sprinkle them evenly across the soil, just like this. and then take about a half inch of soil to add to the top. And in no time, these radish sprouts will be up and putting a smile on a kid's face. Now you can move these outdoors because radishes can take some cold. Once they get about this tall, you can move them outdoors. I would just make sure that they're protected where the container and the soil doesn't freeze. Now all I have to do is add some water and you'll just wanna make sure that your radishes stay consistently moist. You'll wanna put them in a sunny window while they're in the house. Within 30 days, you'll have radishes to harvest, which is another exciting moment for a kid. There are lots of different ways to get kids involved in gardening. This is just a really basic, simple one, but it's one they'll remember for a long time. After the break, we'll take a look at some special visitors I had in the garden last spring, and we'll talk about the Bonnie Cabbage Program, so stay with us. Last spring, I had a few guests. Well, more than a few when you count how many's in this family. The Duggars came out to the farm for a field trip to learn about planting in the garden. Plus, they had a blast picking daffodils for their mom. It's so <laughs> interesting learning about all the plants and how you grow all this. And this is stuff that we could do at our house. Yeah, you can really, um, Jim Bob. It's really quite easy. I mean, again, they're just four by four, I mean, eight by eight beds. And the kids did a great job finishing up this bed for me. So they've got the knack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they love getting dirty, so this is uh, part of it. And really, we would save a lot of money, too, growing a lot of our own food. Well, you can. And um, I think you've got to get it set up, and you certainly have plenty of help to, right. to, to grow a garden and harvest a garden. So with all these mouths to feed, about, what, are, what are you spending about a week on food now? You know, we probably end up spending about $3,000 a month on food now with yeah. food and that includes some diapers and that type of stuff. Sure, but, sure. But yeah, we could save a lot of money by growing our own, especially during the summer months. Sure, yeah. You can't believe how much you can produce in such a small space. Do they have uh, like a series of duties and so forth that they go through yes. each day? Each one of the children have jurisdictions. And so like one of them's responsible for the trash upstairs, one responsible for the trash downstairs. And each one of them have a room to kind of keep clean. Very good. And uh, they have assignments. They, and we want them to learn that hard work is fun. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you, and the rewards that come from that. And so I tell you what, at a place like this, they could learn a lot about gardening <laughs> and a lot of hard work. Well, you guys did an amazing job. Well, thank you. Well, it does, it does require a lot of hard work, but to your point, it's work we enjoy and we really believe that there'll be a success in life if they uh, follow the Lord with their life and learn to serve others. And we'll probably have some of our children, maybe doctors, lawyers, nurses, uh, farmers, uh, who knows what all they'll do. We want them to pursue whatever interest that they love. I think it's so important for a child to be able to have the 
opportunity to follow what they really love. You know, the garden can teach you so many things, um, not just about growing things, yes. but, but you know, mathematics and geography and right. it's a great it's a great classroom. It is. Yeah. You know, for me, it's important for people to know where their food comes from. And so it was fun preparing a meal for you guys, you know, from the garden. So we tried to use as much as we could from the farm. So everything from the turkey to uh, the eggs and, and then, of course, all the vegetables and so forth. Well, yeah, most people think that all the food just comes from the grocery store. But they don't realize that the chicken lays the egg and they can't visualize this and all the work that goes to Well, they seem to be le uh, less and less informed and aware of that, which is a sad thing. And that's what we're about here to show and remind folks that it's important to know where your food comes from. And if you grow some of it, even the better. Well, it's been a pleasure having you all out here. Well, thank you very much. And this has been a joy just coming out and seeing what you can do with property and, uh, and the power of the soil and, and I have a feeling we're going to have a garden from now on. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I hope that, that that's what uh, this visit has yielded. That'd be marvelous. It really inspired us. Very so good. thank you. It's time for viewer mail. I have to say I've gotten a lot of emails lately about people interested in the Bonnie third grade cabbage program. It's a great program. And there are a lot of things to learn about it. For instance, how teachers can sign up and get cabbage plants for their students. What do students learn? And what sort of prize do they win if they grow the biggest cabbage? I recently visited a local elementary school where they were holding an assembly for third graders and discussed the Bonnie Cabbage Contest. I also had a chance to visit a representative from Bonnie Plant Farm to talk about this program. Hello everybody! Are you all excited about growing things? Can you, I didn't hear you. That's much better. Personally, it's just a, a fun opportunity to, to get involved with, with kids. Uh, you know, gardening is looked at as mostly a, a, uh, an adult thing, but uh, looking around the country and getting to, to come into third grade, just like here at, at Dover, it's a great opportunity to get involved with kids and inspire the next generation. How many of you have grown a cabbage plant before? Raise your hand. Woo! That's great. Now throughout the United States and the lower 48, we give out over one and a half million cabbage plants to third grade students every year. Kylie, why don't you come on up? Give her a hand. Jack, you come on up here. I'm, I'm hearing what's going on here at the school, but once the child gets home, can you give me any sense of the role parents or grandparents are, are playing in this in this program. They, they play a very active part. They actually have to be involved in where to plant the plant and how to how to do that and provide the tools. But then they're also involved in that problem solving and it creates a lot of good conversation. Did you enjoy growing your cabbage? Yeah! All right. We're going to expand our horizons now. And guess what? Everybody gets to take home a tomato. All right. And I want a full report on how well you do with your tomatoes. How big was your cabbage? It was 11 pounds. 11 pounds? Here's one for you. Here you go. Make it grow. Now tell me a little bit about your perspective on having a garden here on the school property. Well, it gives the children a chance to get outside, but it also gives them a chance to connect what they're learning into the classroom to the real world, especially at third grade. So many of them think that what you're teaching them is just for whenever they get into high school or college, and it gives them a chance to see that those things you're teaching them now are relevant for their everyday life. Well, I hope that helps answer some of those questions. It's a wonderful program, so I hope you'll check it out. Now, right after the break, when we come back, we're going to take a look at a delicious recipe that kids can participate in, so stay tuned. Now, we just learned about the Bonnie third grade cabbage program. Now we have to figure out what to do with all that cabbage after it's harvested. Rebecca Sim shows us how to prepare a delicious and easy coleslaw recipe. Okay, I remember I'm going to make some coleslaw. Our members like fresh, homegrown veggies. This is about a half of the cabbage, finally shredded. Then you can use more or less cabbage, more or less onion. I'm using about oh, a half a cup or so. 
finely sliced onions, red onions, or I like sweet onions. Then two carrots, grated. It's very easy to make. I'm just gonna toss that. Then I like to use a, a fourth to half a cup of uh, sunflower seed kernels. And the dressing consists of this particular is I've got now half a cup of mayonnaise. Uh, two teaspoons of sugar, two teaspoons of vinegar, and some salt and pepper. Just salt and pepper to taste. And I like to put a little celery seed in it as well. Just toss it up. Some people may like more dressing, some people may like less. I don't care for a lot of dressing. Some people like more or less nuts. Just toss it really well till everything is coated. There you have it. That's it. Well, that's it for today's show. I'm glad we had some time to spend with one another, and I hope you'll find some time to spend with some youngsters and help them get their hands in the soil and grow something. You can't believe how it can change lives. Any of the information in today's show can be found on my website, pallensmith.com, and that includes that delicious and easy coleslaw recipe. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile Oh, no, I can't help but smile